Calimera. My name is Elena and this is Elena the Expat, a channel in which I talk about the expat lifestyle and slow travel. In this episode, I'll be sharing my own first time experience on the Greek island of Idra, slow travel style. Most of my friends have never heard of Idra in spite of visiting Greece multiple times. And everyone asks the same question, why? My answer, to walk. I don't drive, and since Greece public transportation is inexistent, I figured I needed to stay in a place where I can walk anywhere, anytime, easily. Also, to be honest, I was quite intrigued how can a place afford to be fully pedestrian in 2022. More on that later, but first, let me tell you how to get to this intriguing and artsy island of Idra. Most of you will fly into the Athens airport, get out of the arrivals gate and go for three to four minutes to the bus stop. You will need to hop onto the X96 bus. Tickets cost six euro and there's a vending machine and a person selling tickets at the bus stop, so you needn't worry about that. Once you're inside of the bus, activate your ticket and in 90 minutes you are in the Piraeus port. When we arrived, I was pretty confused because there was no sign where the boats were docked nor any number for the piers. It didn't help the situation that we arrived in the last moment, so I recommend you get there at least 20 minutes before your boat leaves to avoid any stress. This is Athens. This is the main port, Piraeus, and these archipelago right here are the surrounding islands. You can see the list here. Here. and we are going to this bad boy which is located here after two hours we finally arrived to Idra I was very seasick at that moment I didn't wear my glasses and I didn't see our lovely host Andy holding a nameplate with my name who was there to escort us to our Airbnb we actually had to go alone uh, to our place and only meet her 30 minutes later as soon as your ferry docks here in the Idra port, you will be greeted by an army of donkeys and mules that will deliver you and your luggages to your hotel for 15 to 20 euros. You might think this is a big price, so I thought, but uh, believe me, the slopes here in Idra are so steep and there are so many stairs that if your luggages are heavy, this is the best way to go. Actually, the island, as you might have heard, doesn't have any sort of motorized vehicle. So it's either you on your two or the donkeys. I would go for the donkeys, definitely. It doesn't mean that they have absolutely no car on the island. I have personally seen a rubbish truck in the city center collecting trash and also a fireman truck parked near the port. And the other way of getting around is obviously by uh, water taxis and by ferries around the island. Something like this will take you to one of the more remote beaches because not every beach is accessible by foot. And even if you're walking, sometimes it could be like up to two or three hours to reach a certain beach. That is way too much, especially in the hot Greek summer. We didn't have any heavy luggages, so off we went to our Airbnb and let me tell you, it was probably one of the nicest and coziest and most authentic apartments in which we have ever lived. And our hosts were some of the kindest and most attentive people. The only word of advice that I got from Andy was that we have a church nearby, therefore Sunday mornings can get a little bit hectic. How hectic? I found out on the next morning. After this peculiar morning, I wanted to find out just how religious Greeks are. I asked Harriet, our guide and an expat who has been living in Greece for decades. Greeks are a lot more religious than people think. Um, religion, it does still play a big, a big role in their lives. Something like 365, um, to my knowledge. Um, out of that lot, it's uh, six running monasteries, 
left with monks or nuns, uh, five churches with priests for weekly masses, and then the rest of them are just uh, closed down chapels. But each Greek family tends to look after one or two chapels around here. So they'll whitewash, they'll paint, um, they'll uh, maintain the, the, the church and also make a service of it once or twice a year. We've not got one in our own name anymore. My husband used to, his family used to take care of two. Unfortunately though, when uh, we lost his sister three years ago, after that we left the chapels and another Greek family have got, got them now. We are currently looking after one, but it's not in our name yet. But we do go and uh, light it up every day. Armed with this priceless insight, I decided to go on my first adventure and visit the most renowned monastery on Idra, Prophet Elias. The monastery is located at an altitude of 500 meters from sea level, a quite steep hike, and is tucked away in a beautiful pine forest. This is the only male monastery on the island, established in 1813 by 13 monks. Look at this cat! And look at this agava! It is huge. It's like Eugene. Actually, when agavas flower, their flower reaches almost nine meters in height. Can you imagine that? I can't, but I can imagine the amazing views we have here. Oof. The hike has only begun, but I'm already feeling so tired. I think Greeks must be the healthiest people on the planet because there are so many steps everywhere and even the old people take them you know if you can't take the steps basically you can't get out of your house well they do have the donkeys though The people of Idra, they got used to the difficulties. Now I'm taking one of the main roads that many Hydriots were taking to Gala Pigadia, or the Good Wells. That was the place where they had to draw water, and that was in the best case. In the worst scenario, they, when they didn't have the water, they actually had to use the savings they had during the winter if the winter was rainy. And this is a road they would take every day. We just walked maybe 10 minutes and we are already so tired. It's good that we have water with us because the wells are closed. Uh, probably it's a pandemic thing. Mm. Now it's the beginning of September. It's almost 5 p.m. and it's so hot. I cannot imagine taking this hike during the summer. It is very difficult as it is and uh, now it's still very, very hot to do it. So I'm not sure how people do it, how people live here. One thing that I really like is that most people here have amazing plants near their house. Uh, I know that the Greek Greece is very dry, but people are trying to make it as green as possible. One of those rare occurrences when you see a cactus with some fruits. I've seen them mostly in supermarkets sometimes. From Galapigadia, we are going towards the Prophet Elias Monastery. Whether we'll end up there or not, we don't know, because the road is pretty steep. But we are doing our best. After some trials and tribulations, because in Idra, they don't really have a lot of signs. You have to figure it out, or I guess be a local and know those things. We found the road that leads to the Prophet Elias Monastery. And uh, so far, the road is well shaded and it's pretty a pretty easy climb. So I'm hoping this will continue like this because I have the least desire to sweat right now. We packed some sandwiches to eat when we reached the monastery, but Eugene is so famished, he started eating. So 
only I'll be left. I don't know if I can still wait for 40 minutes until we go there. So the entire hike is around 115, 130, and maybe even two hours, depending on the speed with which you're going. This sign right here marks the trail. And here it says we shouldn't go there, but it is way too tempting because we can see the sea. Maybe we'll make a small detour, a small stop. So quick update you guys, I've already eaten my plum, I'm eating my apple and I have one sandwich. So I figured it's easier to carry that in your stomach than in your bag, which actually does make some, some sense. Um, what do you guys think? Do you eat your food on the way to the mountain or on the mountain? Oof, I can see the sun finally means we are almost there, almost there. It is such a difficult hike. One thing I can tell you guys, I think it's like you have to have a really good stamina to do this in the summer. I'm not even exaggerating. It takes at least one hour and a half depending on how prepared you are takes lots of water, sunscreen, and ideally do this in the second part of the day because the sun sets on the other side of the island and you'll be at least in the shade. One more, last 100 meters. Whew. Idra landscapes are barren, but don't mistake this for not having any plants at all. Look at this variety and look at all of these trees, although not very tall, that are growing here. We finally made it to the monastery. There is a big, scary looking dog, but actually acts very friendly. He was barking at us when we were outside and when we saw him inside coming at us, we were pretty scared. So the monastery itself from the outside doesn't look like much. So maybe if you're walking, if this is the sole purpose of hiking here, I'm not sure it's uh, worth uh, the, the time. Another interesting fact, in case you're a lover of history, is that here in this monastery, one of the iconic generals of Greece has been imprisoned. He has some disagreements with the central uh, Greek government uh, during the fight for liberation, but they let him out after they realized that he was actually a very valuable resource. The general is Kolokotronis, and they have in the monastery that cell that they were holding him. I'm not such a big history geek, so I'm not gonna see it. But overall, I would say that the monastery inside and outside it's a pretty usual one. So don't make this hike just in hopes of seeing the monastery because I think you'll be somewhat disappointed. Uh, make it if you like exercising and if you want to have a good spot for the sunset. All the hard work is done. The only thing that remains is to eat my sandwich finally and to enjoy this amazing sunset. Oh no, where there's food, there are cats. We have all these cats who want a piece of my, four cats who want a piece of my sandwich. No way am I gonna share, cause I carried this sandwich for almost two hours. No, no, no. If you enjoyed this episode, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you are notified when the part two of this series is published. In the next episode, I'll be revealing my favorite Idra beaches 
eating lots of delicious and nutritious Greek food and surprise, surprise, horse riding for the first time in my life and that on the top of the mountain. See you soon, bye-bye.